versus theorems. A lot of times people don't see the difference between these and they don't realize that they're kind of different, but a lot of times the book doesn't uh, distinguish them either. Okay, so we have the definitions. Definitions, definitions are uh, things that are defined to be and such and such because um, of In other words, definitions are things that are defined to be such and such. We de define a certain thing, and then I'll give you examples of these. Because of a certain given definition, or we can assume something, and then we can say, let this be such and such. And then based on that definition, then we can work with it in order to uh, then come up with some other definition, and then finally we come up with some other theorem. Okay. Um, so basically, definitions are taken for granted to be true. Definitions are taken as a matter of fact to be true. So let's give, give examples of these. Kinetic energy. And then is equal to half mv squared. This is something that a lot of people know. K, kinetic energy is half mv squared. It's the energy of motion. It's proportional to your mass and your velocity squared. A lot of times the book even writes it this way. K equals. But in reality, it should be written like this, with three lines. Okay? When we do three lines, we mean that that's its definition. You can't prove this or disprove it, you see. So it's more accurate to put three lines here. Three lines indicate that it is a definition. In other words, you can't disprove this and you can't prove it. Another one is acceleration is defined to be change in velocity divided by time. And so that's the very definition of acceleration. I'm not going to try to prove it. No one tries to disprove it, and we, but we work with it. There is a definition of um, uh, A is delta V over T. Another one is momentum is defined as mass times velocity. And we'll see this uh, later on in chapter 9. We'll work with momentum quite a bit. Momentum is defined as mass times velocity. We can't disprove it. We can't prove it. But then we work with momentum in order to come up with some kind of uh, purpose for it. So usually, as a matter of fact, always the definitions have some purpose. There's a reason for why we're defining something to be so. Because we, we want to use that later on for some purpose. Okay? The theorems, on the other hand, theorems are laws of nature, okay, that we, uh, that we discover, and then we formulate a theorem based on that, okay? So these are laws of nature. that we discover
and we prove by repetitive experiments. Okay? A lot of the formulas that you're going to see in your book are actually more definitions. A few of them are theorems. Okay? Now, theorems or theories, same thing. Theories or theorems, yeah. Uh, so these are laws of nature. The most famous example, at least in physics one, is F equals MA. The Newton's first, uh, Newton's second law. Okay. This is a very famous example. Newton's second law. And this is an actual theorem. What it's telling us is whatever F is, okay, the force, when you apply a certain force to an object, you're going to cause it to accelerate, and the force is going to be proportional to the acceleration, and that constant of proportionality is your mass. Okay? M is the constant of proportionality between F and A. So this is an actual theorem, and in lab we try to prove this to our best ability. We don't always succeed, but if you have a perfect instrument without error, you can prove this to 0% error, you know? It's a, something that you can do over and over and you can prove. Another uh, theorem is work is change in kinetic energy. This is known as the work energy theorem. Notice here I said kinetic energy is half mv squared. Well, that's a given. But the reason why kinetic energy is important is it comes over here into the work theorem, and it tells us that when you apply a certain, when you do a certain work on an object, you cause its kinetic energy to change. Okay, now we're not going to do too much of this until chapter seven, so don't worry about that. But when we get to chapter seven, I'll talk about that. And then this one we'll get to chapter five. Okay, and uh, and then there's other examples too, lots of other examples. And when I when I when we get to certain formulas later on, I'll usually be telling you, is this a definition or is this a theory? Okay. Now, as far as solving problems, is it going to really change how you solve the problem? Not really. If you didn't know it's a definition or if it's a theorem, you're still going to solve the problem the same way. But it's just nice to know for your own understanding, is this formula something that is uh, just a given, um, I accept it, or is this something that is provable, you know? So it's nice, it's, it's better for your own deeper understanding. Okay. So